Hi, this is Congressman Tom Cole, and this is another one of our weekly congressional chats. Uh, this has been another week where, in terms of floor activity in the House, honestly, we haven't done anything all that significant. Uh, most of the votes have been party line. Most of the bills have been, uh, frankly, what are called messaging bills. It means the majority will pass them through the House, but they're dead on arrival in the United States Senate. So uh, this is the majority, the Democrats, uh, basically trying to give their uh, members some credit or the ability to go home and say they did something even when something's not likely to actually come at it. So floor activity this week, I would say, was not particularly significant. Uh, on the appropriations front, though, we are continuing to have a subcommittee and uh, in the next couple of weeks, full committee hearings, and you'll see bills beginning to take shape and move. Now, none of those will pass as written, but they can move through the House once they're out of committee, and that sets you up for a negotiation with the United States Senate that will begin sometime in the fall. So that will, that will take... Uh, the Appropriations Committee, not only to the end of June, but as they move out of committee, probably to the end of July. And I would expect uh, everything, every bill will be out of committee uh, before the 4th of July break. And I would expect most of the bills will be across the floor of the House, which again, sets us up to sit down and negotiate and come to a common agreement, hopefully uh, continuing to fund the government and certainly keeping, avoiding a shutdown in any case. Um, I think the other big news of the week actually is not in Congress at all. It's at the Federal Reserve. And uh, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates uh, in the largest single jump uh, in any, uh, any monthly meeting since 1994. Originally going into that meeting, they were supposed to raise what's called the Fed rate uh, by 50 basis points, uh, or uh, 50 basis points, half percentage. Uh, instead, they did three quarters, and I think that's in response to the uh, inflation rate being higher than expected uh, last week. Um, I think this is, uh, frankly, a, a sign of how bad inflation already is and how much worse it's going to get. You know, the top line number on inflation right now is 8.6%, but if you really look at the different component of, of inflation, it's much, much higher. Uh, for gasoline, it's much, much higher for food, it's much, much higher for housing. Those are the essential things that people actually need in their lives. You can cut back on a lot of purchases, but at the end of the day, you still have to be able to travel, you still have to be able to eat, and you have to have some place to sleep. Uh, and it's actually the lower end of uh, our income uh, structure that's getting hurt the most because these are the people that spend the largest amount of their disposable income in those three areas. And again, the inflation rate is considerably higher than 8.6% in all three of those categories. Frankly, I would also argue that uh, this is the Biden administration not uh, doing very much on its own to deal with inflation. They're counting on the Fred raising interest rates, which long-term lowers demand, which probably could create a recession. There are some things that uh, I wish the Biden administration would think about doing. The first one is to reverse their stand on energy. Uh, having made some really bad decisions, the ending of the Keystone Pipeline, the curtailment of exploration and production on uh, federal lands and offshore, uh, this the hostility to building any new energy infrastructure in the country. Uh, all those things have raised the price of gasoline and also of uh, heating and cooling costs for the average American family. That's something the president did with a flick of a pen. He could undo it with the flick of a pen, and he ought to do it. A second area where the administration could make a big difference is to curtail its own domestic spending request. Look, we live in a dangerous world, and I would argue that the administration is not spending enough on defense. We need to worry about that but we've spent trillions of dollars we didn't need to spend in the American Rescue Plan, and the president has proposed trillions more in Build Back Better and in a very high uh, domestic appropriations uh, spending proposal. All those things can be reduced. All of them would make a significant dent in inflation. And the administration can do some things like uh, quit toying with the idea of forgiving student debt. That's another inflationary measure. It's number one, unfair. We're helping people that took out debt um, and we're basically making people that didn't go to college or, uh, or paid for it themselves or repaid the loans 
uh, pick up the cost that other people would be forgiven. That's just simply wrong. But it's also, according to most economists, extraordinarily inflationary as well, because the people then have the money that would have gone to repay their debt uh, to go spend on other things, and that fuel, fuels price surges for everybody else. So there are some very simple things that the administration can do. It's a mistake to rely exclusively on the Federal Reserve uh, to uh, deal with inflation. The Federal Reserve can't increase production of goods. It can lower demand by increasing interest rates and making everything more expensive. But what we need to do at the same time is follow pro-growth policies, pro-energy policies that actually uh, put more, uh, more products and more goods in the system. I'd rather lower the price of uh, energy uh, by actually producing more energy than lower the demand by raising interest rates on everybody's home, credit card uh, debt, uh, and, uh, and other items where they, they simply have to uh, spend interest to, to actually get the resources that they need. So I think that's gonna continue to be the dominant issue going forward. We've seen it uh, pop its head up politically. This administration, frankly, has now one of the lowest approval rates of any administration in history. Uh, you'll see a lot of posturing and a lot of finger pointing. Uh, the administration now is blaming energy companies for the cost of energy. Uh, it's uh, blaming everybody it can for the cost of food, doing everything but looking in the mirror, taking responsibility and reversing course uh, and doing some things that both uh, uh, lower uh, the cost of production. Uh, the last point I'd make in that regard is simply the amount of regulation that's coming out of this administration. Remember in the last administration, they prided themselves on cutting the, the amount of regulation in the economy. That helped make our economy more efficient and more productive. This administration, uh, frankly, is much more intent on issuing regulations that increase the cost of everything the average American buys. So I suspect you're gonna hear about that in the months ahead and all the political campaigns, but at the end of the day, remember it's the Biden administration that increase spending well beyond what uh, economists and on their own side of the aisle, people like Larry Summers, the former uh, Secretary of the Treasury in the Bill Clinton administration, people like Steve Ratner, who worked in the Obama administration uh, and the recovery of the auto industry. Both of them prominent economists, both of them uh, dedicated Democrats, both of them warned Democrats, you should listen to the Republicans on this one. You're spending too much money. It's going to come home to bite you and bite the American people. That's exactly what's happened. So we're going to tr work to try and uh, rein in uh, the administration, rein in the Democratic majority. Uh, but um, uh, again, uh, it would help a lot uh, if we would have some honesty on the other side, some recognition of the mistakes were made, and some willingness to reverse what are clearly bad policies that are hurting the American people.